Redditors who quit their job without thinking. What was the last straw? Story 1. I worked as a painter for a franchisee of a student painting company and he kept telling me that he would pay me next week. This went on for about six weeks and the final straw was when I had finished several large projects that would give him ample money to pay me. But he decided to hire another person instead of paying me for all the work I'd already done. Like $1,300 worth of work. Then he tried negotiating down what he thought he should be paying me despite already having agreed in writing what I would be getting paid right from the get-go. I was so mad that I didn't give him notice or even show up for the next day of work because I had bills to pay and needed to make as much money as possible during the summer. I wrote him off as a lost cause and took him to small claims court for what he owed me and eventually got my money through the court. Still was a pain in the ass though and as far as I know he's still working there full time. Story 2 went through several interviews and started a new gig. I'd be providing call center support for Windows, maybe some Apple support. Nothing I couldn't handle. I am, after all, IT support. Hell, I even cleaned the mouse while trying to take the technical test. I get a start date and I'm told it'd be two weeks of training. No big deal. I can do two weeks of training. I showed up on day of training and it's support for Whirlpool washing machines and dryers. Hold the phone. What? That's right. Classic bait and switch. I got up, walked over to my hiring manager and said, I quit. You hired me for Windows support, not washing machines and dryers, and walked out. Two weeks later, I get a call. Hey, this XYZ, your manager. I'm calling to find out why you hadn't come to work in two weeks. I guess you didn't get that memo. I quit on day one because your company lied to me. Got an $80 paycheck. About seven years later, I got a letter in the mail that a class action lawsuit had been filed against the company for labor law violations. Two months after that, I got an eight cent check in the mail. I giggled. Story three. I actually did this about two months ago for the first time. I'm a bartender and I was working in some crappy Mexican restaurant downtown. The tips were trash because the food was disgusting. So we were barely ever busy. So already I'm living in NYC making barely 400 a week when I'm used to making more than double. At this point, I've been there two months and I hate it more and more every day. Around this time, my mother gets really bad pneumonia and due to complications, it degraded her heart. So she has to have open heart surgery to repair a valve. It's a risky procedure and my mother is touching 65. Now let me state that staff turnover was incredibly high in addition to us making horrible money. The manager was a complete and utter moron and most staff left after a month. So when my mom gives me a date for her surgery, I go to my manager and give her a basic breakdown of the situation and tell her I need four days off from X to Y so I can be with my family. She says no problem, but just to play it safe, I send emails and texts confirming that I indeed do have these days off. She agrees. I think, cool, no problem. Well, I was dead freaking wrong. Three days before the surgery, the schedule for the week comes out and I'm scheduled through the entire week. I immediately go to my manager and ask what the hell is up because I'm not wasting away behind this moldy, rat-infested bar in the West Village while my mom has surgery. No crap. This woman has the nerve to say I didn't request off at all. When I show her my paper trail stating that yes, I goddamn did put in a request, she says, What difference does it make if you're there the surgery is going to have an outcome whether you're there or not? And starts to rattle off about how I need to be a team player and I'm messing up her stuff by requesting off and yada yada. Her voice fades off and I literally see red. I say nothing and go back to work. This is at 5 p.m. Happy hour and our rush starts at 8. I'm the only bartender on today. Fast forward to 8.30. My bar is slammed. I have a bunch of drink tickets from the servers and it's a mess. Total crap. My manager comes behind the bar and instead of offering any assistance, she tells me not to bring home drama to work. I stare at her in disbelief for a moment, truly stunned that such a tone-deaf moron could possibly be in charge of anything. I laughed at her stupid face and walked right out the door and went to go see my mom. Story 4. I was 21 working at UPS. I was a truckloader the first year. Became the fastest loader in the warehouse just because I like working quickly. Only wanted to become a supervisor because my manager was really easy to work with and always wanted to help solutions to the problems. Once they promoted me to supervisor, they transferred my manager to a different warehouse and didn't say why. 
worked as a supervisor for a year, and once peak season arrived, mid-November to early January, things were getting crazy. And my manager was just a yes man to his boss. Never helped solve issues, just said figure it out or just get it done. Well, in November, my best friend and I won a World Series of Beer Pong Satellite Tourney to get free entry and stay at the Flamingo in Vegas for the tournament worth $600. The tournament was from January 1st to 5th. Well, during peak season, it's nearly impossible to get time off, so I looked at this tournament as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity with my best friend. Things were just getting so crazy, and they weren't approving any vacation requests. I wasn't getting assistance from my boss with the workload, so I just said, screw it, I'm out. Come to find out my manager, his boss, and four other managers got fired for changing time cards to make their production numbers look better. I found out why they shipped my cool manager away, because he wouldn't participate in the dirty deeds. My best friend and I placed 46 out of 500 teams. It was one of the best memories I have to this day. No regrets. Story 5 I used to work as a housekeeper at a really shady hotel. Wasn't the best job in the world, but the pay wasn't that bad. The owner and his wife were horrible to everyone, especially the housekeepers. I eventually worked my way to being the head housekeeper, but they kept referring to me as a maid. I don't know why that bothered me so much, but it did. Anyway, the rodeo was in town and we were really busy. I had every single room to clean and none of my other housekeepers were showing up for work. So I asked my boss where they were and he said he gave them the day off. They're young and have stuff to do. They were all high schoolers and I was 19 at the time. It was summer so he decided he wanted them to go out and have fun and leave these 65 rooms to me. I was already mad at that, but then it got worse. I get to go about my 15th room. I'm exhausted and I just want to get one more done so I can take a break. I knock on the door, no answer. So I let myself in only to see a man standing naked in the doorway. I apologize and try to leave when he calls me back. He said he never wanted me to clean the room. I told him I couldn't while he was still there and certainly not while he was naked. He said I had to do it. He was a guest. I went to my boss and explained why I wasn't cleaning that room. He told me I had to do what the customer said. If he wanted to be naked and in the room while I cleaned, well then that's what had to happen. I threw my cleaning rag at him, told him to screw off, and left the rest of the rooms to him. Story 6 my first job in aircraft maintenance was for a grumpy old dirtbag. I was a completely green apprentice fresh out of school, and the old b had no understanding of what his obligations were when taking on an apprentice and expected me to just already know everything. He'd send me to do jobs unsupervised, wouldn't provide any instructions or guidance, then get upset if I messed something up. He'd shoot me out for taking too long to do stuff. He'd occasionally call me into his office and quiz me on random crap then belittle me for not having all the answers, telling me he was going to phone up his buddies at the college and tell them how disappointed he was with the quality of their graduates. Guy was a total hypocrite too. Didn't have current manuals for any of the aircraft. Didn't properly track parts and hardware. He literally had a room full of random spare parts with no history and took all sorts of shortcuts. One time during a windscreen replacement, rather than measuring out the hardener for a sealant, he eyeballed it. The stuff was supposed to be set up in a couple of hours, but it hadn't hardened after three days, so he made me paint over it. We were supposed to cut open and inspect every oil filter we replaced, looking for metal that could indicate a failing engine. He'd store all the old oil filters on a giant workbench without labeling them. Then after a year or two, go inspect them all at once. If any had metal, there was no way of knowing which aircraft it came from. He got away with being crappy because the Transport Canada inspector responsible for adults in that area was a friend of his. And he'd boast about how audits consisted of them being lazy over donuts in the break room for three days. Anyway... It was the last day of my probation and he called me into his office to tell me he had a very difficult decision about whether or not to keep me on. I told him I'd make it easy for him and quit on the spot. Story 7 I worked on a farm throughout high school for a very wealthy couple. The husband was a successful commercial real estate agent and the wife trained dogs to do hunt and field tests. I primarily worked for the wife assisting in training the dogs, but it was a farm. I did various things for the husband as well. The husband was a raging alcoholic who would get pissed if you don't share a drink with him. When his wife was out of town participating in competitions with the dogs, I would have to drive over to the farm multiple times a day to feed the horses, clean out their stalls, etc. 
and I would often run into him, but I tried to avoid it when possible because he made me uncomfortable. Anyway, I was like 17 and it was summer, so I accidentally slept through my 6 a.m. alarms one morning and didn't get to the farm until around 8 to feed the horses and clean out their stalls. Not like it mattered, horses can't tell time. The husband was there and had already been drinking as I could smell it on him, and he started laying into me about being so late. He told me I was a poor white trash piece of crap, and if my parents let me oversleep for my job, then they're worse white trash pieces of crap, and I would never amount to anything just like them, yada yada. I told him he could take care of the horse poop himself and that I quit, and as I was leaving, he was yelling at the top of his lungs that he would find me and kill me. I never went back. Story 8. I was 18 years old. I took a year off between high school and university to work and save money. I had a part-time job at a self-serve gas station to earn a little spending cash as almost all of my full-time job money was going to university savings. The new assistant manager instantly had a hate on for me and treated me like a lazy kid because I had arranged with the past manager, the mom of one of my high school friends, to work two slower weeknights, 10 hours per week. Every time I talked to the new assistant manager, she tried to pressure me into taking shifts that interfered with my full-time job, and she started saying that I wasn't a team player. It wasn't fair that the manager wouldn't change the shifts I'd agreed to. I needed to take more hours, etc. Two months after the new assistant manager started, I got in a car crash. It wasn't my fault. I t-boned a lady who ran a red light, and the lady barely managed to get her car to the local police station where she filed a false police report stating that I ran the red light. While I'm at the police station, the new assistant manager called to ask me if I could come in two hours early, aka 45 minutes from the time she called. I apologized and said, no sorry, I can only come in for my regular start time. Assistant manager freaks out. Apparently, everyone I work with says I'm lazy, I don't care about my job, I never do anything to help anyone out, I'm self-centered, she works hard but I don't appreciate her, on and on like that until I hang up on her. I show up at work five minutes before my regular time, storming in the customer entrance rather than the employee entrance, slam my key on the counter in front of a couple of customers, tell her I was in a bad, not-at-fault car accident, and when she called, I was trying to resolve the false police report that was filed about me, and that I refused to work another minute for that company as long as she was an assistant manager there. The assistant manager had a wide-eyed look and attempts to say something as I walk out the door and never return. Story 9. I worked for a landscaping company that operated more like an MLM scheme. I only worked for them for like a week. They mostly targeted students and immigrants who needed work in the summertime and would take anything. With promises like, make your schedule, make X, Y an hour, and work outside. They target desperate people, those without proper documentation even, and they paid cash so everything was under the table and I'm 100% certain they were not paying taxes. I was stupid enough to go for it when I was 18, went to the info seminar and instantly got terrible vibes. But I figured, eh, I don't have anything else going on, so why not? They pick us up in a cube van, like 15 people crammed in without seatbelts, and drive us to a location. They give us aeration machines, and we go around trying to sell plans and aerating lawns. Basically, whatever you sold, you would get to keep 10% of the money, and the company kept the other 90%. You also had to work a 15-hour day in the hot summer sun. No supervision all day, no bathroom breaks or anything unless you choose to take them yourself, and you'd have to find a bathroom to use too. Anyway, I did this for a few days and the pay was miserable. Let's say you collect $1,200. Well, you get to keep $120. $120 for 15 hours is $8 an hour. And at the time, minimum wage was higher than that. Well, sometimes I got a little higher than that, but much of the time it was around minimum wage or lower. The second day we went and showed up, they drove us to another city an hour away. It was pouring rain all day. Nobody wanted to buy stuff. I don't blame them and nobody wanted their lawn aerated in the pouring rain. So I ended up with like nothing at the end of the day, and it was miserable. The next day I came back in the morning, we drove out to some suburb, and the guy gives me this talk about how last time I didn't make enough money and I needed to pick up the slack this time because these machines are expensive. I'm clearly not trying hard enough, etc. Well, that pissed me right off. So that day, I took the aeration machine out and busted my freaking ass. Did my best to sell, 
did the orations where I could, and worked up a sweat. I collected $1,800 by the end of the day. At the end of the day, you would wait at a certain spot and they'd pick you up with a machine and bring you back to the station so you could deliver the money and get your cut. So instead of going to the pickup spot, I went to the grocery store and bought a bag of sugar and poured it in the gas tank of the oration machine and left it by the side of the road. Then I took the bus home and pocketed all the money. I ignored all their phone calls and eventually they stopped calling. They never took identification or social insurance numbers or anything, so they had no real proof I even worked for them in the first place. This was about 10 years ago, and now my only regret is that I didn't do that the first day. Story 10. It was a Wednesday. I got a call from my mom when I was at work to tell me that my dad took a turn for the worse and maybe had a day or two left to live. I immediately went to the company owner, small business, and told her the situation and that I really needed to leave right away since he lived a few hundred miles away. She told me she understood, but since I was working on some important projects, I should just come in on Saturday since he should be d by then. I said okay, turned around, walked to my desk, deleted all my files from the computer, left my badge and keys on my keyboard, and walked out. Dad passed away on Friday, and I turned off my phone that night until the following Wednesday or Thursday while I spent time with my family. I already hated the job and the owner for other reasons and found a new job a few weeks later, so I can't say I regret anything. Story 11 So the building my job was in closed down at 9 p.m., and everybody except security had to get out so they could shut everything down. One of my supervisors, I had eight of them, yes it was like office space, kept scheduling me until 9.30 p.m. I repeatedly brought this up at the end of the night and was always told, no, that's just a mistake, you need to leave. Fast forward three months and I get called into a disciplinary meeting. The reason? I kept leaving early. I had like 8 attendance points from leaving early because one of my idiot bosses who works in the same building and definitely should have known when it closes couldn't figure out how to schedule. I explain my side, which is pretty obvious, and they say they'll hold off any disciplinary action while they look into it. A couple of days later, they told me they weren't going to remove those attendance points. I told them to shove it up their ass, walked out, and went to a concert with some of my now former co-workers. Story 12 Worked at a Best Buy in high school. Some people from a different store transferred over and one of them took over scheduling from my supervisor. She gave me a total of 10 hours a week, down from my usual 30 to 40. I had to save two checks just to pay my cheap cricket phone bills with those hours. I complained to my supervisor about her scheduling and they raised me to about 15 hours. I couldn't understand why or what I'd done to get cut so much. When my birthday came close, I reminded her constantly not to schedule me that day, which shouldn't have been a problem considering my crappy hours. She told me constantly not to worry. The schedule comes out and that's the one day I'm scheduled for a full 8 hours. I try to contact her and they tell me she was on vacation and I can't change my schedule. I called to quit that same day. Then later, I found out that the manager who I called when I had quit had been smuggling money from the store at the moment I called her and was leaving the city. She never told anyone I called to quit. Story 13. IT manager here was working for a company that didn't consider us a real department. Lots of things leading up to this, but the last straw was an announcement that a satellite office had been shut down and any employees that could relocate to our office. We, the IT department, found out about this at the same time the rest of the company, months after the decision had been made. Nobody told us anything, and this would involve obscene amounts of extra travel, hours, and stress as we accommodate the moves, the infrastructure, and everything else involved with such a move. I left in the middle of the announcement. Follow up. My boss, CFO, threatens to fire me if I don't do the work. Can't fire someone who's already quit. Then the CEO calls me and asks me back to negotiate. I agree to come back for six months if I get a 25% raise for myself and my entire team. After six months, I left and they laid off everyone else. 